the whole open access thing of Lover Press allows us to look at the stats for our book. So I recently looked at the stats um, that is, you know, that are maintained on the webpage. And it's pretty heartwarming for a scholarly author to see that level of engagement and readership with our book. Um, so I wanted to ask you, how has the fact that the book is open access affected how you have shared the book with students or colleagues and your conversations around the book? I think as the, the cost of academic books becomes um, for many state colleges or small state colleges and universities um, virtually prohibitive and as the premium uh, for library shelf space also becomes an issue, um, open access seems to be a wonderful way of sort of solving both of those problems. And, um, and two, I think as a scholar who feels, I feel in many ways like it wasn't that long ago, I was a poor graduate student. Um, knowing that this book is fully available to scholars of virtually any level and even to advanced high school students is really heartening and um, seems to you know, remove a number of different obstacles that um, any but the most elite universities or elite uh, university students or graduate students um, might not have to worry about. And I think in that way, it kind of democratizes the field of, of Bishop studies in a really important way. And I hope I hope that other publications will follow suit too. Um, yeah, I thought it was really interesting that once the uh, pandemic was went full strength, um, like Muse opened up to everybody, JSTOR, like everything was now ob obtainable without an institutional subscription. I think it's really important that our that our book is open access because uh, because the archive is not digitized yet the only place you can see these materials, unless you have the means to travel to Vassar is in our book, like, or in, in other archive collections, but our book show, our book is open access. So you don't need to have lots of money. You don't need to have access to a library subscription at a university. Um, and I can, you know, send this book to friends and family who aren't in, in institutionally affiliated. And so it does democratize access. And I think um, in the case of, you know, a writer who, who has been um, misinterpreted and misunderstood in some of the ways Bishop has the, the, the role of that in, in some of the recovery work projects really matters, right? So um, I'm really pleased and uh, just excited that our that our book has such wide access and is getting such great readership. It's it's wonderful. Because the digital representation of the images, et cetera, is so, so beautifully done. Um, I think it, you know, for graduate students who might not be familiar with archival research or intimidated about doing it, it's kind of a wonderful entry point um, to, to doing that kind of work um, to the extent that, you know, the Vassar Special Collections or maybe the Poughkeepsie Chamber of Commerce should sort of endorse this book because it, you know, <laughs> it does, it does create, uh, it's enticing, right? It's appetizing in terms of wanting to, to have more um, time in that archive, um, time with those materials. Yeah, it's interesting that the book came out just before we all locked down and couldn't go to the archive anymore. So, so I'm hoping it will build that audience because you're right. I mean, I've never, I mean, I've never seen, I, I have seen reproductions in other books, you know, other scholarly books that, that have maybe a couple of reproductions or something, but there's nothing like this out there where you have this uh, quantity of images. And if you think about Laura Patterson's yeah. um, chapter on the notebooks, those, the, the images are just like bursting out of the page. It's, it's amazing. So, um, and I had never really appreciated those notebooks in quite that way before I saw those digital images of them are just amazing. Yeah, and you're actually reminding me that in, you know, a few years back before our book came out, I had tried to photocopy the drafts of one art from Al Edgar Allan Poe in the jukebox. And the <laughs> production quality is so awful. Yeah. I mean, it was just uh, impossible to read, you know, it's all kind of grayscale. I think definitely the vividness and the sharpness of the images of 
the documents that are published in uh, the Lever Press uh, is hands down uh, something you can actually work with. It also matches Bishop's vividness. Like it's there's something mm -hmm. that, a nice a, a sort of friendliness to it. I like it that it's the wave of the future. I hope it. I hope it's able to to keep going that way.